Hey, hello, Cherries. Welcome to Live Jerry Cherry Sunday, episode 116. And today, I'm going to perform and show you how to play Miserloo by Dick Dale. Such an awesome song. Um, for all you guys who love the sound of surf guitars or old Western sounding guitars, and, uh, and then you want to learn the theory behind why this song sounds so cool. I'm going to go over some of that as well. So, uh, yeah, it's just a, a real, really cool song. I was, in, I was actually in, um, in Tampa last week. I was on a, on a small tour with an ABBA tribute band that I play in, and uh, we stopped at this really cool beer garden, and there was a, a guy playing. I think his name is, I should have checked. His name is Sam Williams, I think, and um, he was playing all this great surf music and old Western stuff and i just thought it, we were having such a good time listening to it and i thought you know what, i'm gonna give it give it a shot so <laughs> so i'm gonna go ahead and uh, perform mr lou for you and then i'm gonna show you how to play it but really quick first i'm just gonna say hello to my friend here in the chat and uh, as usual as normal i will put timestamps in the description so you know exactly when to start the uh the actual lesson hello scott Dig in the t-shirt. Give you a round of applause. My oh, man, Oz, man. Good to see you. Morning. Hello, Alba. Good to see you. So, Scott, you're digging the shirt. So, you know, when, when I was making a thumbnail for this, I was looking up some pictures of Dick Dale, and he was wearing my shirt. <laughs> I thought it was kind of like meant to be, you know, it's like, there he is, where am I? Sure. I have three of these, not this exact one, but H bar C shirts, which are this style. And um, I had them for years when I was playing with Chubby Checker. I just thought it was kind of a cool look. So um, I found a couple of, couple of these at um, different thrift shops around town and, um, and they've been in my closet forever. And I was like, Dick Dale's wearing my shirt. <laughs> so I was like, I'm gonna, it's perfect, you know, it's like meant to be. Oz man, Duckdale was amazing. I like Duckdale too. <laughs> I know what you mean. Like I like Donald Duck too. Donald Dick Duck. <laughs> That's so cool. Give a round of applause for that. So, all right, without further ado, let's just uh, let's get into the song. I created a backing track. And um, if you want a copy of this backing track that I created for this song, just email me at info at Jerry Cherry and uh, I'll shoot it right over to you. I whipped out this backing track last night. It's pretty simple. and um, But it's a lot of, um, of right-hand work in this. A lot of, uh, it's called tremolo picking. And um, I'll break it down a little bit after, after I play the song and then we'll... Um, We'll talk about it and we'll go from there. All right, so without any further ado, have a sip of water. My Disco Unlimited mug. Let's get it going. You guys ready for some, uh, some Miserloo? Let's see if I'm ready.
All right. There you go. If you like Misery, please hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. I like good stuff. Give you a round of applause. All right. So that was Dick Dale and Misery Lou. And uh, it's live. Pardon the couple mistakes I made in there. But uh, I tried. <laughs> so, all right. So um, let's talk about it a little bit. Let's, um, let's break down what Misery Lou is from Dick Dale. I think it came out in 1962. And, of course, he was the pioneer of that surf guitar music. And uh, so thank you very much for checking it out and listening. I'll say hello to my friends here in the chat. Alba, wow, this is awesome. <laughs> wow, you are awesome. And uh, where's the harem? <laughs> it is very Egyptian sounding. <laughs> And uh, very cool. Thank you, Ozman. And, well, it is pretty Egyptian sounding. So I could tell you that the scale basically comes from two different scales, actually, in the song. And basically, it's the, a lot of people call it the Phrygian dominant scale, but it, and it is the Phrygian dominant. But the first scale is more of a double harmonic major. And there's one note different in there. And the Phrygian dominant would be more like, it's like a. But that's a dominant seventh. The, the double harmonic major is like this. So it's basically a major seven chord. And it's, it's different. Because there's that one note different. And it only does that in the first, in the initial riff, where it's um. Seventh degree, major seventh. So it's a mo. It's actually a scale called the double harmonic major. So it's really there's five scales in music in Western music, and um, basically it's the major scale, the melodic minor scale, harmonic minor scale, the um, harmonic major scale, and the double harmonic major scale. It's double harmonic because it has two minor thirds in it which are right there, that jump, and then you have another, so you have two minor thirds, you're like, so it's, it's pretty much all based around that, and then when it gets into the song, then it plays more of the um, Phrygian dominant, which is more of the seventh, which is more of a, uh, so, and it's, um, now th the most important thing of the song is the trill picking that you have, and it's, um, actually it's tremolo picking and it's um something you really got to work on and it's you could practice with a metronome start off slow and i have a little metronome right here too which is i just bought this last week when i was in tampa a little expensive for a backstage tuner but but i found it really really cool like you could like um this song is in um In all honesty, when I made the backing track, I um, I slowed it down a couple of beats per minute, <laughs> which is still fast. I recorded it in 167 beats per minute, and the song is like 170 or 171, the real real song. So I only slowed it down a couple of beats, and I probably could have played it a little bit faster, but it's fast, and I just learned it last night, basically. <laughs> Seemingly simple, but it's not. It's it's hard because uh. You got to stay consistent and you have to really relax your wrist. It's harder on the right hand, on your picking hand, than it is on the fretting hand. But syncing up the two is... Uh... So what I did was, throughout this morning, I would uh, practice with the metronome. And I would slow down to about... I don't know. It's, I mean, you can start at like 100, right? And do like... Uh, just practice your tremolo picking. 
which is important. Basically, play four notes, chord, play 16th notes over the chord note. Because that's basically what it is. It's not perfect. I like to usually go perfect with um, guitar solos that I do, but I might get some chewed out a little bit in the comments here because it's not perfect. If you really listen to Dick Dale, it's there's some nuances that I'm not really, um, not really playing. But for the most part, you have 16th notes. So if you practice the 16th notes, You can just build yourself up to like 110 and then 120 and just practice it, you know, just like any metronome work would be. Then you go. Practice whole riff, even the octave up where it goes. Okay, so do your metronome work. Very important, because that way you could, um, you know, get faster and get a tempo with it. And, um, okay, so that's one thing you have to do. Another thing I would recommend would be to really relax when you're playing this one. Do some yoga. <laughs> do some deep breathing, because it's it could take a lot of work, and it's very stressful on your hand, on your right hand, to just do a lot of alternate picking like that for so long. You know, after a while, it's just going to really tighten up your wrist. It's going to be tense. It's going to be very difficult to play. So if you agree with all this stuff, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you, Scott. Um, other tips on this before I really kind of break it down. The pick that you're going to use is like a... A Jazz 3. I'm using a Jazz 3. There's a couple different types of Jazz 3s. This is an old one that I've been using since I started. And it's um, it's small and it's pointy. But it's not just pointy. It's actually slightly rounded. I started using these Jazz 3s because they're a little bit I like the material a little bit better. It's the same concept, basically. But I had to break... I had to go back to my original jazz threes because these are a little bit more and I need all the help I needed all the help I can get on this one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Alcohol will relax. Yeah. You're absolutely right. <laughs> can you get me a beer, please. So at this jazz threes. Okay. Metronome work, the jazz threes. And um there's not really a lot of muting, although I'm kind of palm muting right here on the, by the bridge, just so I can have control of the ring. But in general, you want it to kind of ring out instead of... So I'm backing off on the bridge, the muting. Tough, see, it definitely tense up. You gotta relax the wrist. All right, so, so first riff was the double harmonic major riff, which is the first open string. Let's go to this camera here for a second. Break this down. You got the double harmonic major scale. The whole scale goes like this. And actually, I made a video on the har double harmonic major scale, three notes per string. I'll put a link in the description for that. And it goes through all the modes, positions of this. And it's actually in E as well, so it's pretty cool. So the riff is open, and then first fret, fourth fret. What is it? Then to the fifth fret. Seventh fret, eighth fret, up to the eleventh fret. Back to the seventh fret, 
No, eighth fret, seventh fret. And does it again. Then it goes. So it's basically. I think he does some kind of trills right there too. But for the most part, just get the um, quarter notes, the um, 16th notes in there. One E and the two E and the three E. So it's good to just kind of do that. And then eventually you can put the trills in. Then the second rip, well that's more of the, um, that's the eighth fret, seventh fret, back eighth, eighth fret, fifth fret, fifth fret, fourth fret down. So you're basically in the middle of the scale right here, of the either the double harmonic major scale or the Phrygian dominant. So all those, it's basically the same except for the, the seventh degree, which we're not even hitting the seventh degree here. We're hitting the sixth degree, the fifth degree, fourth, Six, five, four, and the major third. So it's really over a major chord. So when you think of a major chord, you don't necessarily think of. <laughs> you think of, you know, the, the major scale. But no, you have this cool scale. Or this one. Over a major scale. I mean, over a major chord. That's what the rhythm's doing underneath it when when the guitar does come in to play. It's like then it goes to an F chord too. So that, that riff you have there. Second time it goes. So it's all inside of that Phrygian dominant or double harmonic major scale. So the first time it goes. No, it stays on the third, right there. And then. Then it goes up an octave higher, where it's a, which is the same thing as the low octave. Same thing up, up on the high E string. All right, so hopefully you're digging this, enjoying it. If you are, hit the like button. Let me know if you have any questions about this. <laughs> and that's basically the same thing. After the riff. So, I'm really not putting in the trills, but there's some trills in there. And then, there's a trumpet solo in there, but I'm playing, playing it on guitar. So it goes to an A minor chord there. After the riff goes, A minor. Uh, 
F. E major. F. E major. Maybe one more time. F. E major. And then stops it. A minor. But that solo is uh, E, E flat. It's a chromatic rip. This goes right up to the A. So it's E, E flat, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A. Right up there chromatically. Then up to the B. C, E flat. See, right there, there's a note that's kind of out of context with everything else. This, um, this D sharp. Because we're in basically in A minor, and you're hitting a, um, a flat five, but it leads really nicely to the to the E that it's going into, so it's okay. Right there, right? And then it does riff like. That's the Phrygian dominant scale right here. When you have the E underneath, and you're playing starting on the F, I think of the flat nine note. Landing on the B note. Right there, you're kind of taking advantage of the, um, of these two minor third intervals too. From the B, A flat, F, G. Like it diminished. Then it goes to the A notes, right here, this little trill right here, this tremolo riff. Basically the same thing we did before, but down here in the lower octave, going up the A minor scale. Down a half step, then up a whole step. To the C note, D sharp. Now we're back in E doing the same riff, the uh, Phrygian dominant. And that riff is... Basically, this whole thing is the Phrygian dominant scale. F, E, F, E, D, E, D, E, D, C, B, landing on the B. And then, I, mean, I think that riff is close. He's doing something, probably a little different, but it's it works. So you have a... Eventually goes back into that riff again, the top. Oops. That's basically it. And you go home. That is the whole song. It's only like two minutes long. And, uh, you know, it's a lot of fun. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Maybe we'll, uh, and like I was saying, if you want, um, basically if you want the backing track that I created for this, just let me know. And um, I'll just email it to you, info at jerrycherry.com. And you will get it. It's all for you. And... 
Let's see what else I want to mention here real quick. You know, I do have a guitar course. You can um, check out. There's a link in my description. It's called the Essential Skills Collection, where I go over fret memorization, the circle of fifths, and playing the blues. So really check that out if you can. It really helps the channel if you uh, subscribe to that. And uh, I would appreciate it. Thank you very, thank you very much. And uh, what else do I want to mention here? Um, let's see. So uh, once you're practicing this, once you, you get the email of the song and you're practicing, and if you have any questions or anything about it, you know, let me know what kind of concerns you have, like um, having issues with the tremolo picking, the tempo. You could always slow it down. You know, it's a good practice to do that. I was doing that all all morning. Or the notes. It's basically the um, harmonic minor. I mean, the double harmonic major scale and um uh, so it's it's pretty cool to when you take a weird scale like that and you can make music out of it you know it's not very common but it's um uh, it's pretty cool and i enjoy it so i go live every week here on sunday at 12 o'clock and uh hopefully you'll join me again next next sunday you know what before we wrap this up here today i'm gonna take one more pass it's only two minutes long and uh try to give it one more shot and see what we can do if we can do it a little, little bit better the second time you want to hear it one more time? All right, let's do it. It's live. It's my show. I could do what I want, right? <laughs> it's our show, actually. Maybe I'll even tune for this one. I should be using my new Peterson tuner because that thing, man, puts you right in. But it's not connected. It's sitting right over there. You're looking at it. I gotta plug a cable into it. All right, let's do this. Here we go, Mr. Lou, take two. I really gotta breathe for this. It's so f it's so consistent. Oh, one more thing I want to mention about it. They're all downbeats on the quarters. So if you feel like you're just getting a little bit lost, pretend that imagine that you're kind of pushing away. You're pushing. Every quarter notes. Like you're riding a horse. So you know that you're always going to be down, 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 down. Always. Even on the... So that kind of keeps you, you know, keeps you in rhythm. It'll Hopefully it'll keep you in. So you know where you are because you're constantly down. You're pushing away. Think of yourself pushing. You find yourself going back on the downbeat, then you you might have lost your way a little bit right there. But you just got to keep going. No matter what, you just keep going. You don't stop. Once the song starts, it is what it is. But try to you know keep that in mind because sometimes I think that and uh, it helps. Let's see if you can help me this time. Here we go. One more check. One more try. Let's do it.
All right. <laughs> Thank you guys for putting up with me one more time. Hopefully you had a good Sunday and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. It's still early out. So go out there. It's freezing here in New York. It's like in the 20s, I think. That's all right. We enjoy it anyway. Thank you, Ozman. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Alba. Thank you, everybody who's watching this and in the future. I love you. And uh, keep keep on trembling. <laughs> keep on trembling. And be cool, be kind, be cherry. I'll see you next Sunday. And if you want to learn more about the, har the double harmonic major scale and modes, I'll put a video right up there for you to see. Love you guys. Peace. Happy Sunday. Ciao.